Hello again and thanks for joining me for another jaunt into the Student Survival Study Skills Series. This time we're going to journey into writing a Godzilla-style killer lit review. Things are going to get a little bit complex, but I'm going to give a full explanation and leave nothing out, so I'm sure you'll find it beneficial. As an expert in higher education and having recently scored a gigantic 91.4% in a lit review assignment, I have something of an insight into the subject. I also coach and provide workshops and further help on academic writing and critical thinking. Hmm. Before we begin, I have to tell you that this is not a short clip. There's no way around it other than you listening and taking notes as we go if you want to get a great grade. I will give you some very handy tips on how to make things easier, but I can't do that by telepathy and so you'll have to watch the whole clip if you don't want to miss anything. Now is the time to pause, grab yourself a cup of coffee, find a comfy chair and then let's go. It's true to say there are no shortcuts to success, but I can help take lots of having to find your way through the process by offering the benefit of my experience and knowledge. To do this, you need to address the following areas of a lit review and essentially all good academic writing projects. I'll address each term individually, and I would suggest you take notes as we go rather than having to listen to me again, although it may be fruitful to do so. Okay, the salient points are address the question. I cannot stress enough how important this is and how many times I say it to my students and sometimes they don't listen. It may sound obvious, but the amount of work I see that simply does not address the question is amazing. The most important thing your assignment or essay must do is address the question. If you don't do this, you have failed to understand what's required. And so if there's any doubt whatsoever, ask your tutor for clarification. Researching. Um, everyone tells you not to go here, but I'm telling you to do the opposite. Begin with Wikipedia. However, never quote Wikipedia. I'll say that again. Never quote Wikipedia. Never reference Wikipedia. Never copy from it or take it as gospel, but it is a great place to start and I'll show you why soon. Websites are going to be your saviour and there are a ton of sites out there in Webland that can help you. You'll almost certainly have to use your university's library and I'd highly recommend that you charm the librarian to help you in this aspect. Failing that, or as well as that, the most accommodating site in my experience is ResearchGate. It's also nice and free. Then there's ProQuest Central and Elsevier, although Elsevier do charge. There are ways around this if you know the DOI, which is the Digital Object Identifier, and it looks like this. Then there's Google Scholar, for which some reason Google decided to park at scholar.google.com, although as with Elsevier, not everything they show you there is free. There are ways of getting tons of articles for nothing. If you Google Alexandra Albakian, here's her name, you'll find her webpage which is called SciHub, that's S-C-I hyphen H-U-B, which gives papers away for nothing if you insert the DOI. Not that I condone what the brilliant girl has done, of course. Okay, back to Wikipedia and type in SAML, then hit enter. It gives us the term and it gives us um, a definition or an explanation of exactly what it is. What, what it will also do is give you a list of history, products and services, blah, blah, blah. And then you can click on the references, which takes you directly to the reference page. There are some decent links to research papers and there's a good chance we'll be able to use some of them. Structuring your work. Use the best exemplar you can find for this and structure your simile. Some teachers don't like handing these out, but the best teachers will do in order to help. If you've never seen a lit review, you could come unstuck very quickly. Most teachers will offer a good and a poor example so you can see where the differences lie. My teacher was great and she gave us a superb example which helped me and many of my peers absolutely do not rip it off or steal any part of it. This is the main reason that teachers don't like offering exemplars, but I believe the benefits outweigh the drawbacks. You must create your own original work and you must cite every single source you use. Not only will this give you a piece credibility, it will also help get you a better grade. Tutors love to see a well-researched piece. If they ask for 20 references, give them 25 or 30. I was asked to provide 30, I gave 69. The teachers hate seeing stolen or unoriginal work. Do not ever, under any circumstances, 
use an essay mill, ghostwriter, contract cheat. It is wrong both academically and morally. In some cases, it's also illegal. Australia, for example. And these sites will trash your degree certificate and all your achievements. Also, one very, very serious thing to bear in mind. If you go to one of these sites, you are simply not good enough. You are not good enough. And I want to say that again, just in case you don't understand. You are not good good enough if you go to an essay mill site. Academic vocabulary is very important, so it's vital you use the correct terminology, spelling, grammar and academic language throughout your piece. That also means you must not use contractions, slang, jargon, too many initialisms or acronyms or pronouns unless it's the positionality part. Academic genres. Whichever kind of assignment you're going to address, this will help. Exactly the same rules, though not the structure, will apply whether you're going to write a report, a case study, as we're doing here, a lit review, a research proposal, a reflective journal, an essay, a thesis, a dissertation, whatever. Your writing style. This is your voice. It's the way you convey your work across to people who read your work. It's the way you present, which includes the flow, the vocabulary, and how you engage the reader. As with any written work, the reader must be engaged or you will lose them. The flow of your work and ideas. Now, this comes in almost the same category as the previous one, but this concentrates more on coherence and narrative stream of your thoughts and ideas. Coherence. Again, this alludes to the previously mentioned too. Your work must always flow in a logical manner and make sense. Transitioning. Transitioning is a word for moving from one point to another with a logical and seamless flow. And this is usually a sentence that shifts the reader effortlessly from one point to the next, or it could be in the form of a graph to explain details or reveal figures. It's usually a sentence that joins paragraphs together. Thesis statement. Now, this is the crux of your work. It's the whole message in a single sentence that usually comes at the end of the opening paragraph. Every sentence, every paragraph, every subhead section should be able to relate back to this thesis statement. Rubrics. Using and following a rubric correctly will get you a better score than if you don't. If you stick to what the rubric tells you to do, you cannot go far wrong. Essentially, the rubric tells you to do exactly what it says on the tin. I'm going to brag a little bit here and show you mine. As you can see, I tick every one of the right hand boxes. And I was only able to do this because I followed the rubric to the letter. Is my work exceptionally organised? Do I give pointers to every section? And are they clear? Yes. Is it written using academic, formal and well-structured language? Yes, it is. Do I provide a comprehensive overview of the context and do I discuss blah, blah, blah? Yes, I do. Are my questions clearly defined and supported? Yes. Okay, so you get the gist of what I'm trying to tell you here. Common mistakes. Poor use of the article, plurals, countable and uncountables, rogue apostrophes, poor citations, you can check out my other video on site and referencing for this, illogical flows, subject verb agreements, hanging participles, also known as dangling participles, spelling mistakes, too many topics in one paragraph, fragmented sentences. Now, I'll do a run of videos to help with this soon, so keep checking. Better still, subscribe and click the bell. I've also done a short video on this, um, which is common academic mistakes. So feel free to check that one out on this same channel. Referencing. I say this to all my students and clients. Referencing is the easiest way to get points in your assignment. References are structured and their mechanics. Get the structure right and you can't go wrong. However, you also have to make sure they're credible and legitimate. Referencing a YouTube clip like this would not really be sufficient. However, referencing one of the Stephen Krashen or David Crystal video clips, also available on this channel, would be as long as they pass the Ron Seal test. The reason is because these guys are experts in their field and the clips are always going to stay there. Relevance, obviously, is very important. Right, we're getting to the nitty-gritty of what we really want. Writing the literature review. 
As I'm sure you're aware, all lit reviews precede a possible research proposal and your job is to investigate relevant research that's gone before so that you can find a niche in the market, so to speak, for your angle. My subject was the rising use of essay mills and how we can combat them. And if you don't mind, I'll use my final master's education submission as an example. I did a lit review for a couple of reasons. One, it was part of my degree, and two, because once my degree had finished, I wanted to conduct research into how to beat the rising challenge that is the contract cheats that are doing their level best to trash your and my education and the value of your and my degree. As I mentioned, I managed to score a 91.4% grade, and so I think it should be a good exemplar, although I'm not going to give you the whole thing, as you won't need it. There is, though, an extensive breakdown of what I did and how I did it. There has been plenty of research into essay mills and contract sheets and it goes back quite a long way. Lancaster and Clark wrote about this decades ago but I wanted to bring it further up to date and look at the context closer to where I work which is the Middle East and the UAE in particular. Luckily I found no evidence of research in this field and context which gave me the in. After writing a ton of possible questions, I narrowed it down to the problem and the region, and in my summing up, I would offer further research into possible solutions. So, my lit review is around an investigation into contract cheating in tertiary education and how to combat the problem in a United Arab Emirates context. So, we've got two points that we're looking at there. Getting started. First off, I brainstormed the heck out of my subject to see what kind of search terms I might use. I ended up with plagiarism, social media advertising essay mills, essay mills, contract cheating, why students plagiarise, why students use essay mills, what drives students to cheat, methods of plagiarising, social media in tertiary education, dishonesty in tertiary education, essay mill use in the UAE, contract cheating in the UAE, second language plagiarism, and international students use of essay mills. Hmm. Before I did any web searching, I knew I had to plan out my lit review to say what I wanted to say. And so after another session of brainstorming, I wrote out a headline for each of the points I wanted to make and turned it into a rough plan. Once I'd done that, I knew exactly what I wanted to say, where to say it. And so underneath each of the headings, I began writing what I believed to be true and what I had experienced. I still hadn't looked for, paper, for any papers at this point as I still wanted to make my search as easy as possible. Selecting your research. Armed with the search terms from the brainstorming session I had, I hit the search engines. You can do the same once you've got a bunch of ideas, give them a quick googling. You'll almost certainly be hit with masses of returns. My initial plain Google search brought up 46.4 million hits, so the next job is to narrow it down. I did this by using Google Scholar. It was still too many, and so while I wanted to use some background from a while ago, I wanted the majority of articles to come from more recent times, so I narrowed by date to cover the past 10 years. Even then, the figure was daunting, and so I used different search terms to hone my focus. You'll have to find a way to narrow your search terms, and so be as specific as you can be. Once you find an article that could be of use, Browse the abstract to see how closely it fits with your agenda, and when you find them, download them. If they're not available directly from Google Scholar, copy the title and use ResearchGate, or think back to the picture I showed you of Alex Elbakian. Once you've got a bunch of them, I went through over 120 of these by the way, the next part is to find those that will be of use, and after that you'll need to look for the parts that you can use. You do this by opening the article and searching the terms to see if any of them have the same as you. If they do, great. If not, try another few terms and see what comes up. If you don't find anything, try the next and then the next and so on. Now you may well go through dozens of these though. By using the method of control F and your search term, you can narrow them down very quickly. Even with the amount I downloaded, it took me only 30 or 40 minutes to find what I needed. Once I had them, and there were around 60 or 70 I knew I could use, I put them in, in the folder, and then I grabbed a cup of coffee. Using the plan. 
you've got your plan as per the image I showed you earlier. So now we have to pad it out a little. As I mentioned, I wrote some brief points after the brainstorming that were the starting points for each of my sections. The abstract is a summary of everything you're going to write and so you can wait until you've written the whole thing before you do this. The same with the intro, although it's good to have a rough idea of what you want to say. The reason for this is because it may change part way through. You may have new ideas, you may come across new ideas, you may come across new points, and so it may change what you want to say. Background and context. With even a little reading, you should have an idea of what's already been said about the subject and what the point of your study is going to be. For mine, it was all about the region and what effect corrupt essay mills and cheating has on students in the area. Positionality. You know where you stand and why you want to cover this subject. This should be relatively easy. Uh, now, this, uh, this particular area affects my job. It affects the students I work with and try to support. If there's some way I can stop this filthy trade and make sure that my and your degree certificate still mean something in 10 years, then I want to do that. Theoretical framework. This is gonna be about which theory frameworks I'm going to discuss. What are the main reasons that students use essay mills and how will I measure this? Methodology, kind of obvious, but it's gonna say how you gather your evidence, where you will search, which websites, which search terms, how you separate the wheat from the chaff. By the way, never ever admit to using Alex Albakian's site here or anywhere else even if you do use it. While it may be arguably morally right, it's legally wrong and I would never suggest that you break any laws of the country you live in. So, while it's there, I would not advise you to use it. I must make myself clear there. Discussion and analysis. Here's where I make validation with pointers for each section and as you'll see, they're pretty much self-explanatory. All right, the rise in contract cheating in higher education and its effect. This is the main crux of the piece. It covers the essence of what I want to know and will lead me to the next points. The next point being academic writing challenges of second language English speaking students. While plenty of L2 speakers have no trouble with communicating, academic language is entirely different and so this is where there are lots of problems. My research told me that many L2 struggle with this aspect, certainly when it comes down to paraphrasing. Now we'll look at paraphrasing in another clip as this is not a five minute thing by any stretch of the imagination, it's a tough thing to do. What students believe constitutes cheating. Now, there are many who think that getting a mate to do it for them is okay. Um, that if they copy a few sentences from their friend's assignment, that's acceptable. That using work they've submitted before and their own, and so isn't cheating. They think that's acceptable. Unfortunately, all of the above are considered cheating or plagiarism and can get you kicked out of university with a trail of shame following you. So don't do it. The motivation to cheat. Now, this could be financial, it could be because they haven't organized their time properly or have been doing other things rather than spending the time they should on studying. It could be that they're just not good enough. It could be that they're lazy and see a degree as a commodity rather than a learning process. This is the part I discuss my findings in those areas. How students reconcile themselves with cheating. This is all about the why. Here we explore how students come to terms morally with cheating. They look at things like, well, if he cheats or she cheats, then why shouldn't I? And I don't cheat that much anyway, so it's okay. Of course, that's not the case. Next, we look at strategies to discourage the use of essay mills and support students. This is where I delve into ideas and theories on how we may be able to combat the issue. Findings and conclusion. This is the part where I tie everything up into a nice neat bundle with an all round summary, once again mentioning the same points. Summary, reflection on research and further research requirements. I use this part to ram home the fact that there's a problem and something needs to be done about it and reiterate some suggestions as to how that may be done and where there could be room for more investigation into the matter. Conclusion. This is the wrap up repeating the main points in a nice conclusive and concluding paragraph. Okay, we're almost home. We now have to look at how to get those extra points with some brilliant use of your sources. Writing the whole thing up is going to be the most difficult part, but you probably knew that. If you've been too lazy to write notes, go back to the earlier part and listen again, this time taking notes as you go. 
It is vital that you use good academic language, sentence and paragraph structure. If you don't, your finished article will not read as well as it should. The best way of learning academic terms and structure is to read more. Your sources should support your argument and add credibility to your work. They will demonstrate you've fully researched your area and subject and that you understand why you have taken the stance you have. Here's a massively handy tip for you. When you find a section that you like, that adds some flavour to your work or gives you support, copy it, paste it into a new document, turn it red and save the document as to be paraphrased. Do this with every source you find useful. For a 5,000 word essay, you should have around 80 or 90 entries, maybe more than that. Some will be from the same author, but follow the same procedure for every entry, not only every author or set of authors. You will turn all of these ideas into your own words by paraphrasing them, typing each entry in black above the original as you go. Do not waver from this method. It is a very good practice and it's one that will save you a lot of time in future. Once you've done that, put the correct citation at the end of it and the reference underneath it. Then make another document and call it references and one by one as you go, put each reference in alphabetical order and keep it read. This is going to be your reference list at the end of your piece and you have to make sure there are the same number of references as there are authors in your work. There will be fewer references than citations as you will almost certainly cite the same source more than once. My method of checking is to keep each citation highlighted in yellow while I write. That way there's less chance of me missing out on a reference. Then go back to the first reference in red. Once you've completed all of your reference list, you will look at your reference in style and make sure you've got all the right entries in order. If it's APA, surname, comma, first initial, full stop, space, open brackets, date, close brackets, full stop, title, publisher, page if necessary. There will be the odd change for each type of source you use, whether it's website, book, journal, report, newspaper, etc. Finally, check over the yellow highlighted citations and check them off against the reference list. This will ensure that your reference list scores maximum points. These points could be the difference between passing and failing or a distinction and high distinction. I know that I've had an 82% high distinction due to my referencing. It really can make that much of a difference. If I'd got that wrong, it would not have been a high distinction, it would have been a distinction. It does make that difference. Don't miss the piece de resistance clip where I will show you how to blitz any assignment with ease. To do that your standard of writing must be excellent and your grasp of English and grammar must also be top notch. Having said that, even if it isn't, I can still show you how to write any assignment very quickly to a better standard and will almost certainly get you a better grade than you might have without this advice. Thanks for watching to the end. Please leave a comment if you'd like me to answer any questions. Don't forget to subscribe and click the bell to let you know when the next clip drops and you're more than welcome to share the link with your friends and fellow students. Please don't nick my work. I know it happens, but it's not good practice and I'm doing this free of charge, so please play fair.